Hi, everybody. Ben? Ildi. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> and this is episode three, I believe, Something of like our map of the soul. Persona. So as you guys know, we are doing these things in like excruciating detail. But our, this album, we are going a bit further and trying to add something to our usual discussions about the music. So this time, we are, we are each episode, we are looking at, you know, different elements. Sometimes it's a production, sometimes it's going to be, you know, Western media's, you know, coverage, which is going to be the last episode, episode four. And we are also talking about, like, you know, songwriting. This is going to be this episode. I got some insights over the weekend. Then, so get ready. And the, the song that we are going to listen to it now is going to be Home. Because mm. I'm your home. Home, home, home. home. <laughs> we are multi fandom here, guys, so there is not much to do. I love that song, though. I think Seven, that's. Woozy is a magician. But <laughs> this is not a 17 reaction, this is a BTS reaction. Guys, as you know, we support each fandom and we love K pop in general. So let's love each other. So, one, two, three, it's home. Getting ready. Haven't seen the lyrics, heard the song. Hmm. Okay, I remember it now. Are you exhausted, Aaron? Must be all the jet lag. Oh, 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 oh. That's a very key hip hop uh, kind of chord progression. I was thinking it's very Bruno Mars. Mm. They really want to be Bruno Mars. It's interesting because it is, but the, the rhythm, kind of like the drums, because Bruno Mars always uses, um, you know, real instruments, mm. and these are electronic drums. So yeah, it's a good catch actually. Now I know what you mean. Now I know what you mean. Yeah. With the rap group, it's like... It's very Bruno Mars. Oh, interesting. Hmm. I like it. I'm a fair rich. I didn't... Never noticed that before? <laughs> no. I just got the switch for it. Switch. To be fair, Bruno Mars songs. Oh. <laughs> oh, so pretty. <laughs> like Bruno Mars songs, they do have a lot of like modulation, key change, and resolution. So, and this is, this song is the same key. Yeah. It's but, kind of got that retro like groovy bass thing going on there. Yeah, the, the bass has an interesting play. Uh, I like this jumpy rap. <laughs> bling, bling, bling. <laughs> 24 karat magic. <laughs> <laughs> they are very into property development. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a hard hat zone. <laughs> That's the sign that Jimmy is gonna ring on my, at my door. Mm. Three bells. Again, the background vocal layering. Yeah, and the little ad libs. You can hear them both like going left from right. Oh, I'm just listening to right, so I'm just getting like. Mur, mur, mur. <laughs> it goes. It's mixed in a very nice circle. Female vocals in the background.
<laughs> that was a that was a that really... last like Ryan is actually sounds so good with V. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it sounds does. so good with his it voice. It does. I really like when V plays around with his. You know, sometimes it gets really nasal. I think he can. He could do gospel as well. Like he could be if he starts like oh happy day. Like he did that yeah. like an American Hustle life, and I honestly thought it was very charming. <laughs> and uh, so, so yeah, I think this song is. Uh, it's it feels like it's clearly a message for the fans. <laughs> That's like every song though, pretty much. Yeah, it's like this album is just just like a a gift gift. for the fans. And this is the part when we brought in, bring in the first, (laughs) because I printed it out and like I, I was trying to read all the things and I think, uh, out of the many articles I read, uh, the person who got it really, really right, or like the magazine who got it really right, which wasn't like a K-pop dedicated, you know, blog or anything like that, was this wonderful girl, Natalie Morin. From Refinery Twenty Nine, because she did an album review and she basically got she basically said the same thing about like you know the comfort that they find in their fans. This is a, this whole this song is a metaphor, and I was feeling the same thing. And basically, he sorry, she wrote down like what she thinks, blah blah blah. blah. But the interesting thing is that uh, kind of the whole conclusion, what we just said, it was in the beginning of the article. So I think she was the one who really got the album in that sense that like mm-hmm. obviously it's experimental, blah 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 blah. blah. But, you know, some articles miss that point that it might not be for them. And and there's nothing to kind of apologize for because it's it's not the audience that they are trying to serve. Mm. But that's we're going to talk about it later on. <laughs> Pitchfork. Um, <laughs> it's a, that is a really good music, um, you know, outlet. But it's just, it was interesting but how not they... not for K-pop. Not necessarily for K-pop. But <laughs> we'll see later on. Stay tuned. So, Hall, what are we thinking? Um, uh, my first thought when I listened to this was Wow, I don't like Jimin's voice in this. What? And that's what? weird because Out I've gone on record. Raging. I've gone on record as saying that B, that Jimin is, for me, the most consistently great member of BTS mm-hmm. vocals, vocal wise. But I really don't like how his voice interacts with this song. I can't stand it. Oh, at the come start, on. I'm very the surprised. The first line, especially, is so shrill mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. sharp. I just could not mm-hmm. take it. <sighs> Okay, that is an interesting take. As I you guys, really didn't like it. As you guys remember... That's, that's why I was impressed with Make It Right, because everyone fitted, and on this, mm. I just don't think that fitted. Okay, I think I think I understand where, you come, where you're coming from. And you guys remember, this is a nice, safe place, this channel. We discuss and we critique things, because this is how K-pop will get taken seriously in this world, in this harsh reality. And how it will improve. Exactly. So... Uh, I think I understand what you mean because this is definitely such a high key and like the, the kind of jumps that they need to do is like la, 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 love your flaws, la, la, give It's, it's the like, little upward inflection that he gave mm. on everything as well just really just annoyed me. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I can I understand where you're coming from. It's, it's, it's kind of like a personal tasting, isn't yeah. it? It's uh, because the make it right he was, like, he, he Clearly he was trying to fit the style mm. which is fine but I just didn't like it mm. at all. <laughs> I think what I found about like you know Jimin's voice in particular interesting because like I feel that he's still a discovery. It's almost like when he first when they first started with BTS, Jimin was like the go to you know high I old know. guy, isn't it? Like so it's almost and then he was trying to find his own own voice, like very Frank Ocean ish, you know, vocals with like more R and B sound, and then he went with the, it's that solo song which was just full of it's very high pitched, the promise I think it was the title, uh, and again. As a vocalist, as a keeper vocalist, I think it it could be very challenging that you have to, you know, suit your voice needs to suit to multiple genres because K-pop is all genres. So it's kind of, yeah, it's a challenge. What did you think about the rhythm, about like the, the song's meaning or production or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. It just yeah. felt like they really, really wanted to be Bruno Mars. And I think what what interesting it is, and this is where I'm going to mention a story that I uh, kind of, you know, was part of last weekend. Last weekend was Easter. I don't know when we will post this, but last weekend was Easter when we were filming this. And uh, I went back to Hungary, Booty Booty Pass, where I'm from. And I used to have sort of a music career there. So I did like a lot of, you know, songwriting and whatever and performed, etc, etc. So I know a couple of musicians and a good friend of mine called Johnny, Johnny Key Palmer. He is a songwriter and a producer and he did many, many things. He's... He for years he used to be the go to person for the latest X Factor winner of whatever country in the region to go to do kind of write English lyrics or write songs for as like this is my winner statement song. So he used oh, to right. so he wrote like a lot of Eurovision songs as well. So it's like 
Um, but in recent years, he he did a lot of uh, songwriting camps and a lot of songwritings in with collaboration with different you know European producers, European songwriters from all over the place, and. He noticed that, you know, Zozo and myself a couple of you know weeks ago went to a K-pop competition again, but this time as judges, um, as the previous winners of the K-pop World Festival here in the UK. So he was like, Ildi, can I ask you a couple of questions? I wanted to show him my songs that I wrote. He wanted to ask me some questions. And guess what about K-pop? Because <laughs> in recent years, you know, it seems that these things are expanding rapidly and they receive a lot of briefs as well, a lot of European writers. It's not just like, you know, the Swedish magic duos anymore. It's, you know, it's Spanish, it's, you know, it's Hungarian. Everybody is receiving, you know, briefs. And uh, and he asked me what my opinion was on like certain briefs that he received. And he had, hold on to something, he had a, he re they received a brief from BTS as well. <laughs> so he showed me a song that was written for BTS and they sent it in and they got on the, got through like the first round, but obviously it wasn't selected at the end. But, uh, and then he also showed me songs that was like, they got a brief that we need a Taeyeon song that resembles this Martin Garrix, whatever hit a couple of years ago, what Martin Garrix, Dua Lipa, we need, mm, okay. we need this and that. Uh, so I listened to a song that was meant to, uh, go to you know oh yeah from, well, from TVXQ. TVXQ I listened to a song that was for a for a SM girl group uh, yeah so, so I listened to multiple songs <laughs> and kind of like gave points to him from like a K-pop fan slash K-pop researcher perspective because the interesting thing is like these musicians are brilliant and they they can create pop songs so catchy so easily mm -hmm. but they don't know a lot about K-pop so it's like when it's like Taeyeon so I told things about like Taeyeon is the queen of high notes so you should you, mm -hmm. you should leave you a, a high note. you should leave a part <laughs> where she gets to shine so like that sort of thing that you know writers might not know and why is this interesting when you said oh it sounds very Bruno Marcy mm -hmm. because those they asked for that. The briefs were very, <laughs> very short, I have to tell you. And they usually give references like that, mm. that like we would need something that sounds like this and this and this and short description of the artist. He also received a lot of C-pops brief recently, oh, by the cool. way. So we'll see what's going to happen there. But, you know, let's hope that Johnny and myself get to work on something one day yeah. for some K-pop stuff. Um, anyway, and yeah, so that's why it was actually your comment was not off whatsoever. Sweet. Not, not off. I've not just been being an asshole this whole time. I'm so no. glad. No, because uh, <laughs> because again, music is super global, and you know, as we discussed in a previous video, like now nowadays, BTS uses a lot of you know foreign producers, foreign songwriters as well. Uh, so these reference points are important to them, so they can mm. understand what they're looking for. If they imagine if they say like, I want something that sounds like you know PH one, oh, which would be beautiful. Amazing. I love PH one. Yeah, I know. And this is why I said it because... Like, Tip top R&B chingu. Love that guy. Yeah. So it's like, like, you just imagine. And this is something that we, we're going to talk about later about the reference to book of, you know, you know, Western pop enthusiast, which is very different from you know, K-pop. Because when we say PH1, we know what we mean. But, you know, we, ha we just have to help out, you know, my friend Johnny next time when he receives a brief. Yeah, yeah. I already told him, like, just call me. I'm going to tell you. Going. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you right now. Because, for example, they wrote a song that was for a upcoming boy band from, not sure which agency, but, like, it was for, like, an upcoming boy band who haven't debuted yet. Oh, okay. And they wrote, they wrote a song, which I was like, okay, this sounds like this and that. Like, this sounds like VAV or, like, it sounds like a Seventeen song. Mm. Or, like, this is the kind of realm. And then he showed me the first K-pop song that, that he ever worked on, which was, like, this is, like, Monster X. So it was, like, for him, he's getting into it. Oh, okay. And trying to understand, like, what he needs to write for. Mm. So, again, story time is over. That was an I, awesome story, though. Really? You like yeah, it? Yeah, I was into that. Well, because I yeah. like production, so it's interesting. Honestly, um, you know, if... If I have the chance, you would love the conversation with him. He's mm. he's a lovely guy, Johnny. Love you, Johnny. Okay. So, next song that we're going to listen to is... Jamais vu. Thank you for pronouncing that. Because that was I'm... terrible pronunciation. Oh, come <laughs> I on. cannot do French anymore. I used to be able to speak French, but really? not so okay. well anymore. Well, that's really something because I... Not like fluently, but like, okay. My, my I could get by. I mean, apologize to any French viewers, or any any people who speak French and watch this, because unfortunately, that's a language that 
I don't speak at all. And I suck at it now. Oh, at least you're désolé, French viewers. <laughs> <laughs> and we are a very international channel. <laughs> anyway, so the next song that we're going to listen to is Jamais vu. Thank you very much. <laughs> and we're going to talk about this time a bit more about like songwriting and production. Okay. Because this had a British duo on it, working on it. Mm -hmm. And kind of like when I read about it, it will make sense. I'll tell you why. Okay. Notebook here, song in. This is a new, wait, this is like a new subunit. Okay, that's new. I it's just the three of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Hmm. 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 Breaking my head, breaking my step, always. Cause I go ship a girl, who gets what she put on the place. This is the like tear bait song of the, of the album. The what song? Tear bait. Yeah. You're all gonna cry. Well, my crying song is, you know, Lost Album, Magic Shop, and Tomorrow. And all the students are actually. It's on the bad direction, should be tomorrow. Mm. It's like early inspirational BTS at its best. Finding mm. the just zone now, type of thing. Oh, okay. This speed up is nice, I like it. But I was waiting for like a breakout bridge. Mm. I was just happy after the three times old because that actually went for it. Yeah. Yeah. Two was so popular in the concert, by the way. Oh, I know. Everybody loves it apart from me. <laughs> Because this, like, although it is a ballad, it's kind of more of a pop song. The most it's ballads. more of a, it's a very pop ballad, yeah. Yeah. Also, I love the um, some of the vocal processing they did on this. That's my part. Mm. Oh. It's such a pop ballad thing. Yeah. But not a Korean ballad. Like, this is the best and pop ballad by the way. This is my This processing is really nice to me. It's like, it's like, um, really much lighter version of Image and Heat. You can hear it in the background, but it's not killing your ears. <laughs> I like J Bob's rapping in the background. Yeah, it's nice. The notebook is out. <laughs> okay, nice closing. Ooh, interesting. I really wanted to go grand at the end, you see, because it. I don't know, be please give me a remedy. Is it, isn't it like something that goes something else? Ooh. Yeah. Pretty much like that. Anyway, so like at the end, I was just like, okay, another remedy, and then the remedy it all comes in and like, da -da -da, like rock guitar and like mm. ring on like all oh, like the cold play vibe of like, you know what? 
you know, it's been very calm so far and just like begging for remedy and understanding and whatever. And now this is like, you know what? I'm going to tear my, you know, not t-shirt, but like heart and I'm begging you with full force. So it's that kind of like, I wanted the song to go there. You wanted it to explode at the end. But it, yeah, yeah. But it might do actually on the concert. I can I can see that happening. Like, yeah. da, 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 because that would, that would uh, you know, maybe it's just a personal style, but when I beg, I beg hard. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> please, please. I'm like a full on drama queen at the theater, <laughs> the theater background kicking in. But, um, <laughs> So, so um, what did you think about this ballad and the trio of them, this subunit of them? Do you think mm -hmm. they worked well together? I think so, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's funny because I, I, notoriously, I absolutely hate ballads. I can't stand them. Yeah, no, ballad I'm, happens, I'm like, I just want to like rip my ears off and, and like, like run away, ready. or I want to fall asleep. Yeah, like, Whereas I'm this the... one, like, it actually did stuff. I'm the full on, but I love I love ballads. I love Korean ballads, and like you know, I used to cry on the key change of "My Heart Will Go On" <laughs> all the time. Like when I was six, I had a period. I just like cried every time when the flute came in, and I was like, "You're here." And I'm like, ah. <laughs> so it's like that. That is a true, true story. Um, but what I what really you know struck me with this one that when I first heard it, because we listened to this already, that's why we talk so comfortably. I was like. This sounds like an X Factor song or something. Yeah. This sounds like a, a that's not a bad thing, guys. It's just like a it sounds like <clears throat> something that a that you you pick to to showcase your vocals. Yeah, exactly. Or like you would pick it as like a kind of um some sort of like a a production where you would have the smoke in the background and like a light shining yeah. from above and it's just like it had that yeah, yeah, or like the please, uh, remedy, uh, just and like then the a, strings are behind you, and the strings are behind <laughs> you. You know what? And here comes the catch, guys, because I was like, I'm imagining these things. It's like, is this the living in Britain and British X Factor really having that like effect on me? This is what's why you going just can't on? watch too much X Factor or you start feeling it. But then, what's happening? I went and googled, and you guys, you guys mentioned it that you know. We read the articles. We do our research. So, Enemy, uh, which now writes about K-pop as well because it's just so big, uh, which is like very, uh, you know, legendary, I would say, British pop culture magazine, isn't it? Enemy. Yeah, it's like the most popular music magazine in in England, UK. Yeah. So apparently there was somebody, is it like an X Factor hopeful who became like, I don't know, second or third or whatever, and the British X Factor who you, who worked on this song. Huh. So actually, we weren't far off because the because the uh, the producer duo that worked on it and other like British writers actually worked on similar songs and they worked on you know X Factor songs or whatever. So, so the vibe is actually very similar. Mm. And uh, and f at first, I think I needed some time to warm to this song. Yeah, same here. Because it was like it's uh, it's somewhere in between. It feels like a Western pop ballad, but it's. But and but it, it it's obviously had you know BTS vibes on it and like the Korean lyrics and everything just makes mm. a massive difference. But it's not a Korean ballad, so it's kind of yeah. So for it's, me, it's, I it's needed to house, I needed to kind of get it at first. So uh, I like the song, but um, this is not going to be my you know favorite BTS songs. I think yeah. uh, definitely. It's one of them that I think is kind of a more interesting song from the album, mm -hmm. which is weird because it's a ballad. But, uh, but like, it's, it had that cool image and hippie thing, which I really liked, mm -hmm. uh, where they just, you know, it's that, that, it's like a, a super duper toned down version of, ooh, what you say, <laughs> with ah. the crazy vocal processing, mm. where it's in the background. Yeah, 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 and yeah. And it was really, really cool. I really like that. She's so good, isn't she? Yeah. Imogen Heap. Yeah. She's if you impressive. guys, if you guys don't know her that much, what what would you suggest to check out the kind of understand the processing that you mean? Yeah, just oh come on, I don't even. It's got a weird title, hasn't it? That song, I can't even remember. But it's it? it's a very famous song. If you've ever watched the OC, people love it from what that, where that guy gets shot and it's like, <laughs> ooh, what you say? Yeah. <laughs> Imogen Heap generally, like she's such a versatile artist, but she has like her own sound, so it's interesting. Mm. And it, and she too, she won two two Grammys as well, so and the Ivor Novello Award, so yeah. 
and wrote the music for Harry Potter and the Cursed Child uh, theater play. And this is where my fact time ends. <laughs> <laughs> Was that your little section? I don't know. I just read you about like it the other day. You like a sting to get you into that section. No, I, honestly, I just read about it the other day. I was like, some people might be interested. Uh, <laughs> but definitely, like, I think these are important to point out because otherwise we just reference different artists and, like... Yeah. But I actually want... I actually want BTS to do a proper Korean ballad as well at one point because, like, when I hear Jungkook saying, you know... If you by Big Bang and I when I when I heard uh, Jin did a cover of like um, almost like a rock ballad a Korean rock ballad which was like something um, autumn uh, autumn and leaves autumn leaves or something like that no that was a BTS song that a story so like he did a cover of a classic rock song mm. and Jin and then I don't know that just fits them so well it has such a nice vibe and. You know, the, like the melody goes in a way that really fits the lyrics, and it's just like you can feel that it's not like you know a Western melody with originally with English lyrics that you then write the Korean lyrics to, mm. but it's a song that was written with an intent to be in Korean. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because sometimes, like you know, it's Korean is a wonderful language in that sense that it has it is very rhythmic, so it's kind of easy to write. Uh, rewrite lyrics uh, into Korean in that sense it just it's much easier than it is for example to do it in German Mm -hmm. and and I just I don't know somehow it has such charm to me when those melodies come alive with Korean lyrics with all their you know subtle nuances and like surprising jazzy chords so yeah BTS do a Korean ballad please Okay. And then when they do, you can tell me, and then I can just peace out of that one. Oh, because <laughs> I it's will not let you. Almost guaranteed that I won't like I it. I will. I will not let <laughs> you. But guys, again, feel free to like whatever you like, and feel free to tell us how you felt about this episode. And see you on the final episode for Dionysus. Plus, what did they have to say about the album? Let's break it down. Western media and BTS. Here we come. See you soon.